Hi guys, Lauren Smith here. I got a H1 in physics and maths and I'll be walking you through 2019's higher level question four. Today's experiment question is about investigating the variation of current with potential difference for a semiconductor diode. So let's get into it. Okay, here's the first look at our question four and we're asked in this experiment to obviously investigate the variation of current with potential difference for semiconductor diode and we're given a table of data we're asked to a circuit diagram a graph and we have a couple of more questions to do with this information now i just want to draw your attention to this little blurb up here and i would implore you to please read the question there are so many mandatory experiments within electricity you do not want to misread what experiment they give you and get confused during the exam it can happen under exam pressure and time pressure so just be aware of that always read the question highlight keywords and so forth so let's get into answering this question but before we do i would like to draw your attention to page 74 of the formula and tables book just when we're looking at electrical circuit symbols and you'll see all of the symbols for resistors. And I want to look at page 75 as well, because you'll have the circuit symbol for diode, voltmeter, ammeter, and so forth, which will really help you with your circuit diagrams. Always keep these couple of pages in mind for when you're drawing out electric circuits. They can really help. Okay, so after looking at those pages in the Formian Tables book, we are asked to draw a circuit diagram for this experiment. Now, a circuit diagram must include some labels. We want to keep the diagram as clear as possible. And quite a lot of marks are going for a correct diagram, namely 15 out of a possible 40 marks for this experiment question. So it is very important that you learn your diagrams carefully when you're learning your mandatory experiments for leaving cert physics. OK, so here's the circuit diagram for this experiment. Now, where you get your marks are... You'll get three marks if the arrangement is correct, which is as how you see it here. You'll get three marks for including a voltmeter, three marks for a ammeter of some sort, or a milliammeter in this case. It can be any type of ammeter. You'll get three marks for the semiconductor diode and a source of varying voltage. The power supply is applying a voltage power to the circuit and the potential divider is varying this voltage here. Now in the correct arrangement for these three marks you will have to have the semiconductor diode in correct forward bias as you see here in reference to the power supply. Okay so next we're to use the data in order to draw a graph of current against potential difference which I've drawn up here now, before I do absolutely anything, I just want to convert all of my values, which are presented in millivolts and milliamps, just into volts and amps, like we have for SI units, just to make everything as explicitly clear as possible. And the reason why I'm doing this, it's not fully necessary because you're using the same prefix, i.e. milli, for both variables. So it wouldn't impact much on the scaling of the axes. But what I want to show you is just when you do have to change values in the data table you are given, I'd always draw out a new data table. I copy the table into your copy or your solution booklet and I would re-input those values in. This can prove as very useful when you're doing other experiments as well. And as you can see that I've done that here and the conversion from milli volts to volts or milliamps to amps is just that you divide by a thousand, okay? So here in the question asks you to plot a graph of current versus or against potential difference V. And because the current is dependent on the voltage, we're going to have our Y values as I and our X values as the voltage values. OK, so here's the graph I've drawn here and I've plotted all of the correct points in this magenta color here just to make it explicitly clear, which will get you three marks. You will also get another three marks for correctly labeling your axes. That includes the variable symbol or the label of the variable, its unit and correct scaling of the axes. So here for every box, I'm going up in 0.01 amps. OK, and it's scaled properly. 
Okay, and the same is done to this voltage axis here, and that will get you three marks. And for having a curve of good fit, which is the purple line, will get you three marks. And that's just a curve roughly connecting the dots on the graph to get this nice curved shape here. Try and avoid directly connecting all of the dots together and trying to get a nice curve, which which what you'd expect for a semiconductor diode, something like this. And um, like you can see here, the curve intersects these first three points here, but not necessarily when we have a turning point over here because we want that smooth growing curve, okay? And that's the gist of the graph. Okay, and now we're asked to determine, using the graph, the junction voltage. And the junction voltage is for what value of the voltage we're gonna get a very, very quickly increasing current here, roughly around the turning point. So as you can see here, I've just copied and pasted this uh, graph over to the right, we can see that this we have a steady curve along these points here. It's kind of steady. And then once it he hits the region of around 0 0.2 volts, that kind of region here, you can just see it just almost goes straight up in a vertical line. You can see from the graph here that it's roughly around this 0 0.2 volt region that you're going to get this junction voltage. Now we can't be certain where we can estimate this value, but um, it gives us a safe assumption. So the junction voltage is exactly the point where it just exponentially increases. It wouldn't really be a point between when it starts to slowly increase, like starting about here-ish, because it's not a steep enough increase. You can say that the junction voltage which I've put in here is roughly equal to 0 0.2 volts, and we can see that perfectly from the graph here. Again, I would circle the point on the graph where you think you have correctly determined the junction voltage just to make it explicitly clear to the examiner. And I would always, since we're just taking an estimate from the graph, I'd always put in this curly um, equal sign just to say that it's approximately around this region. Okay. And given this, we're going to get three marks for this answer just by stating this. Okay, so next question, what happened in the diode when the junction voltage was exceeded? The junction voltage being exceeded just basically means that the voltage of the power source, like a battery or some sort, is greater than this so-called junction voltage. So the depletion layer is eliminated. It breaks down, as we see here. I've just mentioned that. And the reason for this is the strength of the battery of the power source ensures that all of the electrons in the n-type material in the semiconductor are attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery or the power source before meeting a hole in the p-type semiconductor, which if that would happen, it would build up that depletion layer within the semiconductor. And similarly, all of the holes in the p-type material of the semiconductor are attracted towards the negative terminal of the battery or the power source before meeting an n-type electron, thus adding to the depletion layer. And since this depletion layer breaks down, there is little resistance given by this junction. So we have a low resistance in the junction, as we stated here. And once this depletion layer is eliminated, we know that current can flow throughout the circuit as I've mentioned here. Okay, so I have three points down, three main points, and if you state any one of these three, you will get three marks. However, if you know two, put down two. If you know three, put down three. Put down as many answers as you know, even though it only asks for one, because you can build up those marks. Okay, so before we move on to the next part of our question, I just wanna draw your attention to page 18 of the Formian Tables book where I'm going to be looking at the equation of the line formula, y equals mx plus c, but also I wanna look at the page of electricity formulas on page 61 of the formula tables book, where we're gonna be looking at Ohm's law under the resistance formula. And for this question we're asked, is Ohm's law obeyed for the diode? And we're asked to justify our answer. Okay, we are asked two questions here. Is it obeyed by the diode? And how do we justify it? If you don't justify your answer, you will lose marks. 
So clearly from the graph, Ohm's law is not satisfied for the diode. So the answer, which I'm going to write explicitly up here, is no. Just stating that will get you three marks. Now, why does the diode not obey Ohm's law? Well, we can see from the graph, which we plotted earlier, that it is nowhere near a straight line graph. Therefore, current and voltage in the diode are not proportional to one another. And Ohm's law states that the current I is equal to the voltage over the overall resistance in the circuit. And this resistance stays constant for a given voltage and current. Okay? And this Ohm's law fits into the equation of the line formula, which is Y is equal to MX plus C. C being the y-intercept, and we can see here that C is in fact equal to zero, therefore the graph must go through the origin. Our curve does go through the origin, however, it is not a straight line, it's more curved. As you can see here, the slope of the line must be equal to 1 over R, where R is the total resistance of the circuit, and clearly this is not the case. Therefore, the graph doesn't match this form and since the graph is not a straight line graph through the origin which is the requirement to satisfy ohm's law ohm's law is not satisfied this explanation will get you three marks now after all of that lark with the questions about the configuration of the experiment the date and everything like that we're now given a different scenario we are told that the diode is now reversed and data is recorded. We are to state two other changes that are made to the circuit before recording data for a diode in reverse bias. Okay, now three are accepted in the marking scheme. If you know four, put down four. If you know two, put down two. If you know three, put down three. If you even know one, try and see if you can think on the spot map out the experiment in your head and come up with another reason. Even if you don't think it's fully right, always try and put down as many, if not more, that they're asking for. Sometimes your answers might not be included in some years' marking schemes rather than others. So it is important to show off as much knowledge as you possibly can, especially if you want to get that high grade. Okay, so the first one, I've put three down, three are accepted in the marking scheme, but you need two. So the first one is that you are to replace an ammeter with a more sensitive one. In this case, a microammeter, because in our diagram, I put in a milliammeter. Microammeter is a much more sensitive ammeter because it can sense smaller currents. This is done as when in reverse bias, there will be a high resistance due to the large depletion layer within the semiconductor, and therefore there'll be less current flowing through the circuit. And therefore we need a much more sensitive instrument in order to measure the current. Now the second change here is to reposition the voltmeter so it is across the diode and the ammeter. The reason why we do this is the ammeter in the circuit diagram reads the sum of the current through the voltmeter and the diode. Resistance on the voltmeter is huge and therefore takes almost no current. Therefore, the reading on the ammeter is thus the current through the diode of a high degree of accuracy. However, since now the diode is in reverse bias, it has a very high resistance and therefore the current through the diode and the voltmeter may be similar in size. So it will not be as accurate. Therefore, that is another change. And the third one that is included in the market scheme is to remove any protective resistors if there are any in the circuit. And this protective resistor, you can see in the diagram which we drew earlier in the circuit diagram, and it's labeled just the, as the resistor. The reason why we do this is since the current through the circuit will not be large enough to damage the circuit and the resistance in the circuit is already quite high, no more is needed. We want to get rid of as much resistance as possible because the currents are already small enough. Um, we don't want to make it impossible for our sensitive ammeter to measure the current. Okay, so you needed two changes. I've given three, but you'll be given two marks per correct change, i.e. 
2 marks plus 2 equaling 4 out of 4 for this part of the question. And hence, we're done.